Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games of Video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and we're taking a look at our first historic deck featuring a Zendikar Rising and we've got a pretty spicy deck for you in store today. It's a Teamer combo deck featuring Seagate Stormcaller, the 2-mana 2-1 Human Wizard at Mythic and it has Kicker for 4 and a blue, although we won't be kicking Seagate Stormcaller all that often. Instead, when the Stormcaller enters a battlefield, we can copy the next instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost 2 or less that we cast this turn and if the Stormcaller was kicked, we can copy that spell twice instead. And the 2-card combo in this deck is with Seagate Stormcaller and Neoform. So first we play our Seagate Stormcaller, we get to copy the next spell we play. So if we have 4 mana total, we can then play Neoform, sacrificing our Stormcaller. And Neoform, as an additional cost, we have to sacrifice a creature, and then we get to search our library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1, plus the sacrificed creature's converted mana cost. So in this case, that's going to be 3. And then put that card onto the battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter. So Neoform lets us search up a 3-drop, but the Neoform is also going to be copied by the Stormcaller, so we still have an additional copy of a Neoform on the stack once the first Neoform resolves, which means that if we search up a copy of Dual Caster Mage with the first resolved Neoform, we can use Dual Caster Mage. When it enters the battlefield, it can copy target instant or sorcery spell, and we can choose new targets for the copy. So we can copy the Neoform that's still on the stack, once again letting us search up a 3-drop out of our deck, which once again will be Dual Caster Mage. Once we're finished searching up the three copies of dual caster mage in the deck we can search up a copy of mirror image which can copy our dual caster mage and we can rinse and repeat this process once we get all four copies of mirror image copying dual caster mage in play and then we can get the glass pool mimic another new addition from zendikar rising a 3 mana 0 0 that when it enters a battlefield we can copy a creature we control, except it's a shapeshifter rogue in addition to its other types, and we can also play the Glasspool Mimic as a tapped land called Glasspool Shore instead. And then once we get all the copies of Glasspool Mimic copying a dual caster mage, we have two copies of Neoform left on the stack that we can resolve. One of those will end up getting Comot Celebrant, the 4 1 mythic rare from Amoncat Remastered, that we can exert as it attacks, and if we exert a Comot Celebrant, we can take an additional combat step after this one and then the last one will get our Tuk Tuk Rubble Fort, another new addition from Zendikar Rising, making this entire combo possible. A 3 mana 0 3 wall with Defender and Reach, saying creatures we control have haste. So now all those copies of Dual Caster Mage that we searched up can attack right away. We can exert our Combat Celebrant and take two massive attack steps, which will usually be enough to win the game. So that's the pretty straightforward combo. Just Stormcaller into Neoform on turn 4, and we can pretty easily win the game. Of course, Sometimes we'll have drawn a few of the copies that we want to search up, but as long as we can still search up the Rubble Fort, we should be able to win the game. And then the second combo in this deck is still going to be with Neoform, but doesn't necessarily rely on the Seagate Stormcaller, and instead it's with Expansion Explosion. We're going to use the Expansion half after casting Neoform, sacrificing a 2-drop, which can be Stormcaller, but it can also be Elvish Visionary or Wall of Blossoms. And then we can use Expansion to copy Neoform, and essentially end up in the same process of getting Dual Caster Mage, and then getting all those effects that can copy Dual Caster Mage to win the game. So that's the basic gist of the deck. I've seen a few different versions of this deck going around that didn't include the expansion and just rely on Neoform and Seagate Stormcaller. So that's potentially an approach. You could play a more one mana or two mana interaction to synergize with your dual caster mage. We're still playing a few one mana cantrips, of course, since they go very well with our Seagate Stormcaller. So we've got the full play set of opts as a one mana instant that lets us scry one and then draw a card. So it can help us assemble the different combo pieces. And on turn three, we can just play Stormcaller, play Ops, and that's a nice value play. And we also have two copies of Crash Through as additional one mana cantrips that can also give our creatures trample, which can potentially be useful if we're going off and we need to trample over some 1-1 one -one tokens, for example. And then we also have the full play set of Shock, just to give us a bit of interaction. Can take out a core Spirit Dancer out of the Aura deck, can maybe take out a key Goblin out of the Goblin's deck to prevent dying on turn 3. So that gives us a tiny bit of interaction. Another card we could consider is a Fire Prophecy as a 2 mana removal spell that can potentially shuffle one of the cards in our hands back on the bottom of our library, which can be useful if we happen to draw the one of Rubble Fort or Comot Celebrant. 
but that's why we're only playing one copy of each, so we minimize the chance of drawing them. We could potentially play two copies of the Rubble Fort or Celebrant, just so we are more likely to have one remaining in the deck, but then of course we also increase the chances of drawing them, which we typically want to avoid. And then we've got our four copies of Seagate Stormcaller, four copies of Elvish Visionary as a two mana one one that draws a card when it enters a battlefield, so we can potentially also copy it with our Glasspool Mimic or Mirror Image if we don't have anything else going on to still draw a card, and of course we don't mind sacrificing it to a new form to search up our three drops and a single copy of Wall of Blossoms as kind of a fifth copy of Elvish Visionary which at least can potentially pressure opposing planeswalkers if we're playing against a more controlling deck and the reason we're not playing Fibblethip at two mana of course is that it's a legendary so it's not the best to copy with Glasspool Mimic or Mirror Image and then, uh, yeah, we've got our four copies of Neoform, all the different combo pieces, only three copies of Dual Caster Mage, since it is pretty clunky to copy our one drops with Dual Caster Mage, since if we copy a red spell, we need triple red, which might be a bit difficult on the mana. So instead of uh, maxing out Dual Caster Mage, I'm maxing out the Mirror Image and Glasspool Mimic, which have a bit better synergy with Elvish Visionary and potentially Stormcaller. We can just on turn four play a Mimic copying Stormcaller and still play a one mana spell to copy those and that's going to be a bit easier on the mana than using Dual Caster Mage but you could also potentially just play four Dual Caster Mages and then only the three expansions because it's not great in the deck outside of the combo although we can potentially copy one of our one mana cantrips as well. And then going over the mana base, we only have 21 lands in the actual mana base, but of course we can also play our Glasspool Mimic as a Glasspool Shore as an extra blue tap land. And then we've got the full playset of Catria Triome, fixing our mana nicely alongside all 12 shock lands with Breeding Pool, Stomping Ground and Steam Vents. And then a couple check lands with Rootbound Crag, Sulphur Falls, and then a single basic mountain in case we need to search up a basic land. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and this hand's got the Visionary into the Neoform plus expansion, so we're just missing a couple lands. Facing Lurus of the Dream Den. I think we prefer playing against the Spirit Dancer deck as opposed to the Pyromancer deck, which typically has more disruption for our combo. So let's see if they have white mana or black or red mana here. Blue white, so they're the aura deck. So that's good for us, I think. Play visionary. Next turn we can mirror image copying visionary. And we're hitting all our land drops, so looking like a turn for a combo to me. Opponent passes with two mana up. Interesting. They might have kept a hand without too many creatures to enchant, or they wanted to wait until they could play Spirit Dancer and enchant it to get it out of burn range, which is also a valid strategy here. But as it turns out, they're not going to get another turn. Neoform, sack and visionary. Expansion to copy it. And we are off to the races. First get Dual Caster Mage, and then it doesn't really matter in which order we do it. Whether we get more Dual Caster Mages or if we copy the Dual Caster Mage, that's in play. But I like doing it in a certain order. Get the Mirror Image. And get the Glass Pool Mimic. get the Commod Celebrants and then the Piast de Resistance took the Crumble Fort, attack with all, make sure to exert and that should be game. Opponent is still processing what's happening right now. And they died before we could take a second attack step. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw. And we've got Stormcaller and Expansion, so we're just missing Neoform. We've got Visionary to draw, can maybe copy it with a Mimic. I'll try it. Facing turn 1 Mountain, and there's Neoform. So we're looking at a potential turn 4 combo. Facing Goblins, so they could have a pretty early kill as well, and we don't have any real interaction. Picked up Breeding Pool, so I guess I'm okay playing Visionary for now. Can always play the Mimic as a land if needed, but we've got four lands already. And then there's two ways we could do it, either Expansion Neoform or Stormcaller Neoform. Turn 3 Krenko, it's pretty scary. And no lack of Stormcallers here. So, what's my play? I gotta play a Tapland this turn. And, uh, I guess I just play Stormcaller as a blocker. Might as well. If we had a Shock, we could have double shocked Krenko, which would have been decent too. Franco makes three tokens, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll take it. And now it's time to combo. Is there a reason to do one over the other? I guess with Stormcaller, Neoform we get Elvish Visionary as an extra attacker, so might as well. Although I guess Stormcaller is slightly better here. And everything's gonna gain haste anyway. Start out with Dual Caster Mage. And at this point, my opponent should be pretty dead. Glass pull mimic. And then it doesn't matter if we get Celebrant or the Rubble Fort first. But yeah, opponent explodes. They know that the Rubble Fort is incoming. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This is a pretty bad hand. No card selection, no combo pieces that we want here. Uh, this is also pretty medium hand, but we can put uh, Rubble Fort at the bottom at least. And we don't have any fetch land, so we won't be shuffling until we Neoform, and there's Neoform. Probably okay playing the Mimic Tapped here. So all we need now is a 2-mana creature, so we can Expansion plus Neoform. And we were gonna draw one too, but the Robber of the Rich had different plans. So for now, probably just kill the Robber right away. Before they can play a Pump Spell, and then end of turn will opt, most likely. Gruel Spellbreaker. Sir opponent on a Gruel beatdown deck, maybe with Collected Company. Don't need another expansion. Alright, guess I'm cycling the Triome since we're flooding a bit. And then hopefully just draw Stormcaller or a 2-drop. Of course a 2-drop Still needs an extra turn before we can combo. Stormcaller would just do it right away. Bone Crusher grows Spell Collector. So we could be dead next turn to an Ember Cleave. Another Neoform. It's not gonna do it. So best I can do, I guess, is Cycle Triumph now. In case we find a shock. 
Otherwise, we'll just uh, play Stomping Ground tapped, and then next turn we can hopefully draw Stormcaller if we're still alive. But there's the Ember Cleave, so we're dead. Alright, it's too bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Yeah, looks good. We just need a two mana creature and then Neoform expansion will work, or we can draw Stormcaller and that does the job too. And then double shock for interaction. Turn one planes. And Sparring Construct, so this is the Tempered Steel aggro deck. Shock, nice answer to Steel Overseer. I'll take the one damage. Opponent's doing nothing. Yeah, I guess I'll just uh, take my draw step. And then next turn I can... Double shock if needed. Can also wait and next turn go dual caster mage, copy the shock. I see Mecha Godzilla. And gets vigilance. Take one. So yeah, I think we go for dual caster mage copy shock. Can wait and see if they maybe play a Tempered Steel. Next turn I could also Expansion, Shock to kill the Construct, but... I would rather hold on to it, that way if we draw any 2-mana creature we can win the game. Yeah, I guess I can also block with my dual caster and shock. It's probably better than trying to race here. If we were playing the old version of this deck with Narumeha, then we could potentially combo here with a Neoform sacking dual caster mage, getting Naru an expansion to copy it. But strangely enough, we managed to lower the entire curve by one, thanks to Stormcaller and uh, the Rubble Fort. Mecha Godzilla picks up a plus one counter. And I guess I'm blocking here. And then killing Construct turns this into a 7-7, seven, seven, so not quite a two-turn clock. Alright, there we go. So we should be able to pull off the entire combo. Hopefully we don't draw any vital combo pieces here. We did not. Neoform sacking wall, copy with expansion. And we're off to the races. We've got two dual caster mages left. A mirror image. And we have all the mirror images and glass pool mimics still in the deck. And for two white mana, I don't think my opponent can have anything of significance. Uh, 
attack with all, exert, and that's a lot of damage. And we still had a second combat phase coming up. So yeah, the wins with this deck are pretty spectacular. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Lurus of the Dream Den. We do have double shock, so if this is a Spirit Dancer deck, we've got some cheap answers, which is great. The rest of my hand leaves a lot to be desired, so I think it's still a mulligan overall. Alright, this I guess is a little better. Can play this as a lance, visionary, copy it with image, bottom the rubble fort, and then... Opt can also help me dig for the combo pieces. It's still not great, but I don't think I can go to 5 here. They are indeed the Spirit Dancer deck, and there's the most important combo piece, Neoform. So looking at turn to Visionary, if we draw Expansion we can also copy the Neoform Sacking Visionary, that also works. Now they have a selfless savior, so no real points in trying to find a shock to kill the spirit dancer, otherwise we could maybe opt instead of visionary here. Comot Celebrant, not great. Probably just gonna mirror image copying visionary next turn, and then maybe turn four I can copy opt with dual caster mage. I'll save of life's bounty. They're down to one card in hand, so they might not have a ton of auras to work with. Definitely taking three for now. Glass pull mimic the draw. Probably still mirror imaging the visionary. Another Mimic, so we can play one as a land tapped. Although that doesn't let me dual caster mage opts, which I wanted to do next turn. Opponent puts Lurus in hand. Do I jump? I think I wait one more turn. The risk is that they find a flying enchantment and I won't be able to absorb any damage. Picked up Shock, which doesn't do much considering they have a Lurus anyway. So we'll... Just play this tapped and then copy Visionary once again. I guess we'll start there. Still don't have triple rats, so I can't dual caster mage shock, but I can dual caster mage opts. And then now I'm fine jumping. They can also give protection from green to the Spirit Dancer with Alsate, so I can block to begin with. And that's what they'll do. Although now if they replay Visionary, I can potentially kill Lurus. Although I guess they still have the Savior. They did keep up one mana, so they must have some protection spell in hand. Otherwise they would have replayed Alsate. Well, we drew the Stormcaller, so I guess we get to combo here. And, uh, yeah. It might not be lethal right away, considering we have the Celebrant in hand, as well as two dual caster mages. But it should be good enough to go for it here. Yeah, we drew a lot of the combo pieces along the way, so we don't actually get to go for a lethal attack here. But, uh, still just gonna make as many creatures as possible. And now we've got a nice mix of red, green and blue creatures to block the Spirit Dancer if they give it protection. And I don't think I attack here, because next turn we can play Celebrants and attack with a hasty Celebrants. And 
and then exert to potentially win the game. I mean, I guess I could potentially send in a few dual caster mages. They get to eat one, but the other ones have reasonable attacks. Yeah, sure. Do I send in four or five? I guess we'll just send in the four. Because I don't want to be forced to chump with a rubble fort in case they somehow can uh, give the Spur Dancer protection multiple times. So our opponent drops to seven. Well, let's see if we're dead. Rubble Fort does have reach, so that's potentially relevant. And gives protection from red. Can just jump with the visionary if needed. Yeah, just in case they have a flash aura here. Might as well. Opponent passes, and then Komot Celebrant with haste should do it here. And then we also have a shock we can point at the opponent's face. No point in killing Lurus because he can just make it indestructible. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So, took us a while to find the combo pieces. We didn't get to go for the full-on combo and kill the opponent, but we still managed to get there over the course of two turns. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got pretty much the perfect hand here with Stormcaller and Neoform. And then opt to make sure we hit our land drops. Celebrant in hand, I guess, isn't ideal. But we can play it on turn 3. And this turn we're just gonna opt... I guess I can opt main phase in case I find shock. If we're up against goblins, I might want to play shock right away. But I'll keep a lance. And yeah, turn 3 Celebrant, turn 4 Stormcaller Neoform. We've got double blue. Turn two Snoop, so they shouldn't be able to turn three Muxus me, which is the thing we're most afraid of. They might have Jump Palm to kill Celebrant, but I think we can still kill them without Celebrant here. Could avoid drawing my Tuck Tuck Rubble Fort for the turn. Snoop attacks, we'll take it. And a Chieftain, second main. Alright, it's go time. Dual caster mage. And then it doesn't matter what else we get here. And our opponent explodes. Alright, that was a fast one against goblins with a turn 4 kill. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't have Neoform or Stormcaller in hand, but we do have double opt. Can maybe copy one with a dual caster mage. Yeah, we'll try it. Facing a turn 1 Tranquil Cove. Temple of Deceit, so as per control. They might have some interaction for us. There's a Neoform, so we've got Neoform expansion and a 2-drop, so we could combo on turn 4. Shock can clean up Hero Precinct 1. So let's see if they have some hand disruption here. 
Opponent passes. They do seem to have some interaction in hand, so we've got to be a bit careful. Although their sea gets Stormcaller. Makes it easier for the combo here, I think. Just play Stormcaller into Neoform. Sacrifice Visionary. See if they have a counter spell. Mortify the Stormcaller, that doesn't matter. Alright. So turn for combo through a tiny bit of disruption, although it wasn't much. And even without the Stormcaller, we would have been able to combo with Expansion Neoform. Alright, I think we can wrap this up by getting Celebrant and Rubble Fort. Attack with all, exert. When the opponent's tapped out, there's no real need to get every single copy. Alright, so overall, I've been pretty impressed by this new two-card combo. And uh, yeah, the previous iterations of this combo were always three-card combos with Neoform, Expansion, and then a three-mana creature to sacrifice to get Naru. So being able to cut that down to just two cards with Stormcaller and Neoform makes the deck a lot more consistent. And we still have potentially the backup of Expansion Neoform, which we managed to pull off a few times today as well. But there's a lot of ways we can approach the deck. We can potentially play more cantrips at one or two mana, maybe play a card like Shimmer of Possibility to dig deep for the various combo pieces, or we can play more interaction and just have a few of the combo pieces without necessarily going all in with the eight copy effects. Maybe only play the land that can copy a creature and get rid of the mirror image, and then we can still potentially have enough to combo kill the opponent without necessarily building the entire deck around it, and that uh, leaves more room for interaction for the opponent. So there's definitely a lot of ways we can approach this new two-card combo, and I'm excited to see what other people come up with. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.